Thank you. When a new toy commander gets released, everyone starts thinking the older toy is super lame. Everyone except the older toy that is. See, you only get one first impression and when the old toy first meets the new toy, he gets a gun pointed at him so they both start off on the wrong foot. And I get they're just toys, but I guess the reason you feel the tension so much is because the movie does a good job of setting up the universe and establishing the characters you forget are fake. These toys come in all shapes and sizes, like the swole one with the guy high top and the street shark figure, and I know nobody's body could ever be that proportional in real life, but I forget to apply my disbelief which is kudos to the movie staff if anything. One day the military elite go on a recon mission and spy on the human characters. They're hiding behind some leaves and when they zoom in with the binoculars, we notice the kid has a new toy. They send a memo to the leader over a radio device and at first the mission is going smooth but then it takes a dark turn for the worse when one of the soldiers can no longer fill his legs. As for the new toy the kid has, the toy thinks it's from another world, that's what he says at least, but you're not supposed to trust anything the toys say in this movie because most of the time they're just reading from the back of the box so more than likely it's a lie. But just like that time Costanza told Jerry, it's not a lie if you believe it. The dude from another air quote world starts asking people to help him fix his ship to make it back to his hometown and he makes a convincing argument that his story is 0% fiction. The main family in the film has a neighbor from hell. The little kid who lives next door has all these mad science experiments gone wrong performed in his or her room. It's a shame what happens to some of those toys actually. There's dolls with metal limbs and an action figure gets his legs cut off by another kid, he's better off dying because it's going to be pretty tough getting around since toys are way too small for wheelchairs. Sad story bro and the worst part, look at the kid's face. He or she is having way too much fun torturing these toys. But even with all that domestic abuse on their resume, you'd think karma would punch these kids in the neck or something, but nope. The little boy has a string of good luck that makes you question how the world works. He's digging for toys one day and gets a lot of them. He even gets an alien toy with the wrong amount of eyes and gives it to his pet to play with. The toys start taking it personal though and start fighting fire with fire. First the ugly looking toys start operating on the regular looking toys to keep them alive. Then the toys set up traps around the house for the humans and attack the boy next door. The boy screams as loud as he could but his parents fell asleep in front of the TV downstairs and can't hear a word. So eventually he cuts it out after no one comes to his rescue. The toys meet up in the yard and then the main toy uses the rocket the boy tied to his back earlier for a clean escape. After that we get a high speed chase and the toys chase the main little boy's vehicle. It's here we learn that all the other toys have been put in boxes on the back of this truck. The toys outside the truck catch up with the humans by using Tyco RC type cars and at the end of the movie the commander toy that was an a-hole at the beginning turns out to be pretty fly. I mean literally because he starts flying and whatnot or falling with style depending on your perspective. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 Reason videos. <gasps>